population management. Biggest buzzword in the industry now. Biggest. I don't know what it means. <laughs> I actually don't want to know what it means. Because if I believe what everybody else says it needs to be, we'll stop development in this area. So we are following our gut instincts, just like we did when it was the world of EHRs. Because 10 years back, if not longer, people would say an EHR is an e-prescribing system. An EHR is a document management system. An EHR is, just needs to be able to enter your soap notes. And we thought, no, it was about front office, mid office, back office, and streamlining the entire workflow. Same when it comes to population health. We think it's not just analytics. We don't think it's just care planning. We don't think it is just about building an HIE. We think a comprehensive population health management system needs to include the ability to connect to hospital and other practices. Needs to connect and build a closed loop referral system if you're going to get into a community project. It needs to include care coordination, is going to include patient engagement, which we're going to talk about shortly, show you smartphone apps and check in using them and all. And it needs the capability to do analytics, which is top down. Let me give you a sneak peek of what CCMR is. Again, there are lots of topics at this conference that are going to go in depth into CCMR. But I wanted to give you a feel for what we think population health management would and could look like in the future. I'm going to log into. Population health analytics. I get access to a lot of dashboards. And who is I? I could be your financial analyst that's now saying we're in a shared savings program. We've taken on managed care risk, whether it's PCMH, whether it's ACOs, whether it is some form of AQC contract where you need to measure quality and cost. And I have dashboards. Because these dashboards don't just come from EHRs. Now they come even from payer feeds. I have the ability of going ahead and looking at my, in this case, the ACO dashboards. I have a community that makes this up. For every quality measure, I'm able to look at compliance. For every single measure, I can click on it, and I can then see the individual providers and their compliance scorecards against the measures. I can go into my dashboards. And I can also go into what we call the overall analysis view, where you can understand and dissect data to include things like what per 1,000 ER visits, for every 1,000 patients, what is the frequency quarter by quarter of your ER visits for the population of patients that you've taken on risk for? You have the ability of breaking it down per doc, per, per practice, if you like to. There are others. Um, that you can and will be able to dissect as well in terms of admits, um, claim counts, consults, total paid, giving you a comprehensive view of cost in the analytics platform too. If you go into my dashboard, you can do more clinical analysis. Here is a breakdown of all your diabetic patients and their A1Cs. You have the ability of drilling and selecting a certain cohort of patients that you consider or want to drill down into because they have abnormal A1C results. And it will, in real time, give you data for all the other quality measures that are tied to that particular A1C. In this case, we are looking for patients with comorbid conditions, people that are patients that are diabetic and hypertensive. In this case, these are the patients that actually fall in that risk range that are diabetics. You can select them. What can you do after you select them? You can actually click on alerts. And I'll talk about alerts in a minute. Analytics that just sits in some dark black room for data to be captured and gathered and analyzed, but with no communication to the point of care clinician is going to have no impact on quality, none at all. Let me look at one interesting one. We call it the ER frequent flyer program. <laughs> you have them. You better find out who they are. Here's a cost structure breakdown that gives you a breakdown by patient Total cost, total cost per visit. What's the most common diagnosis they've gone to the ER for? What facility do they normally go visit? What's the probability? And this is great. We've actually done predictive modeling. We have predictive modeling in population health. It will give you a risk score, and it'll give you a probabilistic score of what the adverse event could be. And we'll talk about that after. You can understand the risk. You understand the last visit at the ER. 
you even get to know what day the patient actually picks. Now, that's statistically relevant, maybe irrelevant, depending on the data, but it's good information. What do you want to do with it? I talked about alerts. I want to select that patient. I want to click a high-cost ER alert for the provider. When this patient comes in next time, talk to him about going to watch a movie on Wednesdays and not ERs. <laughs> How do you see this alert? Well, if you're inside eClinical Works EHR, and I go to this patient, same place where we showed you all the other alerts for this practice. You have your CDSS alerts, you have your practice created alerts, and now you have your high cost ER alert as well. That closes the loop. It closes the loop. Now, this could be for more than one patient, so you can enroll them into member management programs. And if you notice, there is a CCMR link. If you activate CCMR, you get that. You have the ability of going into the dashboards and look at all the members that now need to be enrolled, and you can enroll them into the different programs you've taken on, whether it's a program for CMS, whether it is a Blue Cross, whether it's a United, Humana, Aetna, whatever shared savings programs you're signing up for, you can enroll them you have the ability as well to assign a care team that includes the PCP, the specialist, the care managers. Create what we call a circle of care and then be able to communicate with the entire circle with one click. You also have the ability of going from here into the patient's chart or let me go and show it to you from here because you'll appreciate as an e eClinical Works EHR user what you can do and then I'll try to toggle outside. If this patient is one of your shared savings program beneficiaries that you're taking on quote unquote risk profiles for, you can toggle between a progress note and a care plan. You have the ability of doing your initial assessment for this patient right here. You have the ability of going ahead and looking at all the individual days that you've tried and talked to them about certain goals and objectives. You don't have to create structured data and open visit by visit and visit. You can actually do it in a whole lot easier longitudinal view and have visits that are done both in person and outside. Along, along with this, you also have something called the CCMR hub, which gives you view into the total cost of patient, not just as terms of ambulatory visits, but inpatient cost and cost for pharma. It's inpatient, outpatient, and pharma. Total cost, total risk, total compliance, giving you one bird's eye view into this patient while you're inside the patient's progress note or chart. Now, what about customers that are forming ACOs where eClinicalWorks EHR is not the only EHR that's being used, you do have the ability of going in and launching this and logging on. You have the ability of seeing again the same members we talked about for enrollment, enroll them into a program. You have the ability of doing the care planning we talked about by taking the patient that we were interested in, looking at their risk score, looking at their cost analysis, go ahead and look at their care plans and work with them. You have the ability of the community view. You know, we've deployed more than 200 EHX hubs in the country, and we have the ability to pull data from many different sources. I don't know if you heard this, but we even finished real-time integration with Epic three weeks ago. Um, lots of customers going live with it. So we can pull data from other systems, and you have the ability of seeing longitudinal views of both patient progress notes, patient visits, and lab results across a community, allowing you to reduce duplicates because this is not just labs you ordered. These are labs that everybody in your ACO ordered. Again, just to summarize, CCMR is a big population health management solution. You can start with analytics, you can drill down into care planning, you can then find a way to keep moving forward, but that's the vision that we have when it comes to doing population health. Not just one product, but closed loop analytics, closed loop care planning. One more thing, referral networks. If I go back into eClinicalWorks, and I click on the patient that we were seeing, That might be the, that's wrong. If I go into the progress note, and if I want to do an outgoing referral for this patient, going to treatment, going to outgoing referral, I have a common address book now of all the providers, the ones that are electronic, that can receive, have the P icon next to them, the ones that don't will receive it by fax, the grayed out ones are not in your network. 
If I were to select that provider, it will ask me questions. Why are you trying to refer this patient to this person provider? Is it because it's the provider's choice, a patient's choice, or because they are not available any others? That also is configurable to make it smarter over time, if you like, to say if you're referring to cardiologist, the EKG needs to go along with it. You can prevent it. Closed group referrals are great. They're going to work. They're going to solve it. Not only this. Now think about this model. You go ahead and say, I sent the referral. Did you receive it? Did you see the patient? Did you book the appointment? You can go into your outgoing referrals, and you will have real-time status on whether the referral has been picked up by that other provider. You'll be able to see if it is overdue. You will also be able to see if there's an appointment given for a particular date for that patient. This is across two different practices, folks. This is not within your practice. This is going real peer, peer to peer, practice to practice, giving you real time status. I think that's a snapshot of what we consider population health. Closed loop referrals, closed loop analytics, finding a way to do care planning and beneficiary management. And I think you're gonna love what we are doing in that space.